The urine finance die vault has suffered an exploit, $11 million drained. So what does this mean for the future of Ethereum and DeFi? Let's talk about it. Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. First things first, let's understand what urine finance even is. Urine finance is a place where you can earn interest on your crypto. In the traditional world, we would give our money to the money man. They would go out and earn interest for us. Not that it was anything special. But now with crypto, blockchain, and decentralization, anyone can go online with an internet connection and start earning interest on their crypto. But it's not that easy. There are a lot of mistakes that a person can make along the way. So with urine finance, it's automated. They do all the work for you. You send your crypto to these contracts, to these vaults, and it starts earning interest. As, as we can see, you have Ethereum, you have USDC, and all these other cryptocurrencies. So you deposit, and then you're gonna see there is a rate at which it will grow. However, I do wanna mention these rates are not locked in. This isn't like centralized finance where they say 5% a year. Over here, it changes due to the market demand. It can say 10%, 20%, and then a week later, it might say 3%. So these are fluctuating and changing a lot. Now, if we scroll down here, this was the vault that was exploited, the DAI version one vault. And as we can see here, it says, due to recent hack, do not withdraw from DAI version one vault if you do not want to realize losses. So as you can see, this is crazy. It says negative 404%. So this hacker exploited these smart contracts and they got away with $2.8 million, right? $11 million was drained, but due to all the fees that this exploiter, this hacker paid, they came out with $2.8 million in profit. But overall, $11 million was lost and this is bad. Well. How did this happen? Well, it was due to a complex exploit with over 160 nested transactions. And we can go on Etherscan and look at it. It's very complex. You can see how long this thing is. Very, very complex. A lot of actions were taken. So of course, after this happened, the price of your in finance, it dipped, but it has already rebounded. We are in a bull market. Even when bad things happen, these things go up. If this was a bear market and this same exact thing happened, you're in finance, their token would be down today 20, 30, 40%. But in this bull market, everything goes up. I wouldn't even be surprised if some project suffered a 51% attack, had a small dip, and then they went right back up. So these hacks that we talk about, they're not out of the blue. We've had many in the past when it comes to smart contracts, and I'm going to tell you this now, there is going to be many more to come. Over the last few years, there has been a hundred million dollars lost to these hacks. And most of crypto, 99% of crypto, except for Bitcoin, is very experimental. We are in the early days, the very early days. None of these projects are at full form. Like I said, the only one is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the old crypto. It doesn't do much. It's boring. It's slow. But this is actually why institutions pour billions of dollars into Bitcoin. There is not much room for error. The way we see Bitcoin today is likely the way Bitcoin is going to stay forever. Maybe there will be some minor changes, but like I said, very minor. We can see with Grayscale and all these institutions, it's Bitcoin. That's what people are buying. But right after Bitcoin, we are starting to see that institutions are pouring into Ethereum. Why is this? Even though I just mentioned that Ethereum is very experimental. It's because Ethereum moves very slow. They wanna take their time and make sure that they're not doing anything dangerous. That motto from Mark Zuckerberg, move fast and break things, that is not for crypto. We're dealing with money and a lot of money. So definitely don't wanna play around with that. And I do wanna give a mention to Cardano because they did do the opposite of every other crypto project. A lot of crypto projects, you know, they just jump into the game and then they move as they go. Hopefully they move slowly, make sure everything is safe. Cardano is going very slow, but for a good reason. They spent the past few years researching, making sure their blockchain will be good and that it will work, and they're still rolling out. So hopefully we will see some good things from Cardano. And because we know that these hacks happen in the past and they're going to happen in the future, again, again, and again, we actually have decentralized insurance just in case these smart contracts do get hacked. Now, the funny thing is this past year, one of these protocols, Cover Protocol, which is an insurance protocol, was hacked itself by a white hat hacker. This is a person who exploits a system for, good, for a good reason. They're not a malicious hacker. They do it to show that there was a weakness in the code and then they return the funds. So this ecosystem is extremely early. 
very early. I think it's much earlier than people think. Many years, five, 10, possibly even 20 years away from true mainstream. And because of this, there is opportunity to make money. But just because we're early days, it doesn't mean that money is going to be made easily. It's still highly risky. This is why people that get in early get rewarded. They're the ones buying something or getting into something when the rest of the world is too scared to. So just because we are early stages of Ethereum and DeFi and this whole ecosystem, it's not guaranteed money. And that's another point I wanna make. People that are coming into the space now looking at something like Ethereum, they think they missed the boat. Oh, it's over, I'm not going to make any gains. This is incorrect. Like I said, super early days. We are five, 10, maybe even 20 years away from where we'll see where these prices of these cryptocurrencies and these blockchains will take us. So just be safe out there. Nothing goes straight up. We're still very early days. This is not going to be the last bull market, right? We have this bull market now. Eventually we'll reach into a bear market and then we'll have another bull market once again. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.